Each and every musical piece across our world's diverse cultures has a few very important things in common. What else can a musician do but reflect their experiences and perception of the world, or write what they know? There is not now, nor has there ever been, a French or German, white or black, Asian or African music. What there are instead are numerous musical expressions that through generations and countless exchanges between cultures became owned by or associated to a culture and This search for purpose is often referred to as religion. Beginning early in life, children in every culture began to ask questions seeking the meaning of life, mostly linked to the religious belief systems established by their parents and ancestors, or that is predominant in the cultures of their upbringing. Human beings will embrace or reject religious systems based on the perceived benefit, the strategies, or logic of their experiences. Concerning our musical world, however, whether or not a person has a specific religious belief, they cannot escape the fact that each and every piece of music that they will either play or listen to over the course of their lives will be influenced, if not solely based, upon the singing or music that has evolved from our world's religions. Well, here's where knowing history from a world perspective and the enormous influence of religions over centuries comes into play. As a result, the pitches, scales, or modes, and manner by which we phrase our songs have been largely determined by the world's religious chanting. Later, how we played the violins or guitars we built largely copied how we sang. We might even go so far as to say most, if not all, of the instruments we use today are descendants of instruments designed largely to accompany religious chanting or later religious songs. We might ask, how is song that says, row, row your boat, like a Catholic mass, or atan, the Muslim call to prayer? There are a few ways by which religious chant distinguishes itself from the music of the streets. Entonement or chanting of prayers or holy texts was historically considered to be largely the proper manner for singing or vocalizing. Meditation, the term mantra, is derived from two Sanskrit words, man and tra, which mean mind and freedom respectively. Therefore, meditative chant using a mantra, common to most religions, is a means for freeing the mind from this world or allowing one to find truth or God within. Instruction Education All religions emphasize the need to study, recite, and memorize the writings of their prophet or teachers. In this sense, chanting the writings or holy books, much like singing the times tables or alphabet, reinforces the patterns, rhythms, and syntax of the text. Memorization is to believe to be improved through chanting versus speaking. Prayer. The favorite means for expression of religious thought through chanting or entonement has been prayer. Much of music, classical, folk, or religious is constructed upon the melodies that served conversation with or praise of God or a higher power. Because prayer can accommodate a greater range of emotion, chanted prayers generally also have a wider range of expressive emotion. Let's take a moment to listen to a few examples of chants from some of the world's great chant traditions.
Χριστός γεννάτε, δοξάσατε, Χριστός εξ ουρανών απαντήσατε. Χριστός επί γης υψώθητε, άσατε το Κυρίο πάσα η So we wanted to know, how does someone learn to chant? We know three things we can factor into the chanting or intonement in all religions. First, the text determines the rhythm and flow of the chant and is generally not metered. Since most texts or prayers are non-metric, that is, they do not have a beat or metered rhythmic pattern, most chants are also non-metric. In other words, songs are generally not chants. Two. We will chant pitches and emphasize words according to the specific languages and religious cultures or environment that surrounds us. We learn from the religions and ancestors who came before us, and we largely intone or come to value melody based on our ancestors' values. And finally, the practice of religious chanting greatly influences non-religious music and vice versa. What we hear in the temples, mosques, and churches influences hugely what we play in the streets, and what we play in the streets impacts our religious music, consciously or unconsciously, willed or unwilled. We turn to the most recent world religion, the Baha'i Faith, as Baha'is have an uncompromising belief in the interconnection of all religions, the oneness of God, and in the use of the arts, music, and chanting or intonement to elevate the human spirit to a connection with the Creator, or to assist the individual in fulfilling their innate purpose. From childhood, I learned from uh, my father that uh, the main cause of differences that exist between all the people in the world, that everybody said that my religion is right and your religion is wrong, is a misunderstanding. As a matter of fact, Baha'i Faith believes that uh, the religion is only one, that is renewed based on the age and capacity of mankind. When I was in Persia, we had different religions. We have uh, the Armenian people, Christian and Jews, are Australian and Muslim. And when I passed through a different section of Iran, I was hearing that everybody with a different tone was praising God. And it was really interesting to me that, you know, the praise of God with different tone is so beautiful. مرده بودم از آب هیا و زندگی بخشیدی پج مرده بودم از کوسر بیان که از قدم رحمان جاری شده تازگی انتام کردی هر وردگار وجود کار از جودت موجود از بحر کرم از محروم ما فرما و در second grade or third grade my teacher said uh, I want you say some prayers and then I said it 
He said, she said, no, I want you chanted. So I remembered immediately my brother's voice. So, was masawebe shadide in jahan no mid magam 